How's it going everyone and good evening. I hope you guys are doing good. Uh, well, today is Tuesday and uh, today we're, we're going to get into a new series and we're going to be studying the book of the Wisdom of Solomon. <coughs> so I'm very, very excited to start this new series and, um, and yeah, before we get started, let's go ahead and pray first. Amen. I got some water here. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just uh, thank you, Lord, for today. Thank you, Lord, for all that you've done. Father, you are holy, mighty, and worthy to be praised. Lord, we just thank you, Lord, for your love and peace and of the Holy Ghost. And um, we pray that you uh, just show us, truth, uh, sorry, show us the truth, Lord, and, and help us, Lord, to live the truth, Lord. And we thank you, Lord. We praise you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and amen. The book of the Wisdom of Solomon is a very interesting book. Um, <clears throat> and the whole theme of this book is about wisdom and righteousness. And, we, we, and we're going to be uh, seeing this more often because uh, Solomon wrote other books. Not just... Um, the the proverbs and ecclesiastes and and uh, song of songs but he wrote this book as well he wrote the uh, he, he also wrote the um, what else did he wrote then he wrote Yeah, he just wrote these books, and um, and this one's written around one BC, and there's three parts to this. We got uh, the righteousness and immortality, the nature of wisdom, and wisdom role in the early history of Israel, and we're gonna be taking a look at the first three chapters of this book, and uh, I'm gonna be using the Septuagint. Uh, <clears throat> if you don't know, the Septuagint is a Greek Old Testament with the Apocrypha. It has the Wisdom of Solomon in them. Hopefully, it can read it a little bit easier. And um, yeah, let's go ahead and read this and let's discuss it. <clears throat> the Wisdom of Solomon. Love righteousness, you that be judges of the earth. Think of the Lord with a good heart, and in simplicity of, see, of heart seek him. For he will be found of them that temper not, sorry, that, that temp, temper him not, and show himself to such as do not distrust him. For Forward word thoughts separate from God and His power, and it is tired. We uh, we uh, re the unwise. For into a madness soul wisdom shall not enter, nor dwell in the body that is subject to sin. For the Holy Spirit of discipline will flee deceit. And remove from thoughts that are without understanding, and would not abide when unrighteousness comes in, for the for wisdom is a loving spirit, and will not acquaint a blasphemer of his word. For God is witness of his kidneys, and a true beholder of his heart, and a hearer of his tongue. For the Spirit of the Lord fills the world, and that which uh, contains all things has knowledge of that voice. Therefore he that speaks unrighteous things cannot be hid, nor shall vengeance when it uh, punishes pass by him. 
for inclination shall be made into the counsels of the ungodly. And the sound of his word shall come to the Lord for the manifestation of his wicked deeds. For the ear of jealousy hears all things, and the noise of murmurings is not hid. Therefore beware of the murmuring which is un, which is unprofitable for and refrain your tongue for backbiting. For there is no word so secret that shall go for nothing in the mouth that blesses slays the soul. Seek not death in the error of your life. And pull not upon yourselves destruction with the works of your hand. For God made not death, neither he has sorry, neither has he pleasure in the destruction of the living. For he created all things that they may have their belonging, so they uh, have their being. And the generations of the world were healthful and there is no poison of, of destruction in them nor the kingdom of death upon the earth for righteousness is immortal but ungodly men with works and words called it to them for when they so when, for when they thought to have it their friend, they consumed to nothing. They made a covenant with it because they are worthy to take part with it. Chapter 2 For the ungodly said, reasoning with themselves, but not all right. Our life is short in tennis and then the death of a man there is no remedy neither was there any man known to have returned from the from the grave for we are born to uh, for we are born at all adventure and we shall be hereafter as though we uh, may never been for the breath is in is in our nostrils is as smoke and a little spark in in the moving of our hearts which being ex, uh, ex, extinguished our body shall be turned into ashes and our spirit shall vanish as the soft air and our name shall be forgotten in time and no man shall have our work in remembrance, and our lives shall pass away as the trace of a cloud, and shall be diluted as a mist that is driven away with the beams of the sun, and overcome with the heat of uh, thereof. For our time is a, it is a very shadow that passes away. And after our end there is no returning, for it is fast sealed, so that no man comes again. Come on, there, therefore, let us enjoy the good things that are present. Let us freely use the creation like as in youth. Let us fill ourselves with, with costly wine and ornaments. Let no flower of the spring pass by us. Let us crown ourselves with rosebuds before they be withered. Let none of us go without his part of our valetorious. Let us leave tokens of our joyfulness in every place. For well, this is our portion, and our lot is this. Let us oppress the poor, righteous men. Let us not spare the widow, nor reverence the ancient gray hairs of the, of the age. Let, let our strength be the law of justice. 
for that which is fable is found to be nothing worth. Therefore, let us lie in wait for the righteous, because he is not for our turn, and he is clean uh, contrary to our doing. He upbraids us with our offending the law, an object to our infirmity, the transgressing of, the, of our education. He professes to have the knowledge of God, and he calls himself the children of the Lord. He was made to reprove our thoughts. He is grievous to us even to, uh, to behold, for his life is not like other men's. His, uh, his ways are of another fashion. We are esteem of him as uh, counterfeits. He abstained from our ways as from filthiness. He pronounced the end of just to be blessed and make his boast that God is his father. Let us see if his word be true. Let us reprove what shall happen in the end of him. For if the just man be the Son of God, he will help him and deliver him from the hands of his enemies. Let us examine him with deceitfulness and torture, that we may know his meekness and prove his patience. Let us con condemn him with a shame death. So shameful death. For by his own saying he shall be respected. Sure things they did imagine and were deceived. For their own wickedness had blinded them. As for the mysteries of God, they knew them not. Neither hope that they for the wages of the righteousness, nor deceit or discern a a reward for the blameless souls. For God created man to be immortal and made him to be an image of his own eternity. Nevertheless, through envy of the devil came death into the world, and they that do hold of his side do find it. Alright, we're going to be in chapter 3. But the souls of the righteous are in God's hand, so in, in the hand of God, and there shall no torment touch them. In the sight of the unwise they seem to die, and their departure is taken for misery. And they're going from us to be utter destruction, but they are in peace. For though they be punished in the sight of men, Yet is their hope full of immortality. And having been a little chastised, they shall be greatly rewarded. For God proved them and found them worthy for himself. As gold in the furnace, as he tried them and received the, uh, him as a burnt offering. And in the time of their vegetation, they shall shine and run to and fro like spark upon the, the stumbly. They shall judge the nations and have dominion over the people, and their Lord shall reign forever. They that put their trust in him shall understand the truth, and such as be faithful is in love shall abide with him. For grace and mercy is to his saints, and he has cared for his elect. For the ungodly shall be punished according to their own imaginations, which have neglected the righteous, the, the righteous and forsake the Lord, for whose soul despise wisdom and nurture he is a miserable, and their hope is vain, their labors unfruitful, and their works unprofitable. 
Their wives are foolish, their children are wicked, their offspring curse, uh, sorry, is cursed. Therefore, blessed is the barren, uh, barren that is undefiled, which has not known the sinful bed. She shall have fruit in the vegetation of souls. And blessed is the eunuch which with his hand has wrought no iniquity, nor imagined wicked things against God, for to him shall be given the special gift of faith and inheritance in the temple of the Lord more acceptable to his mind. For gracious is the fruit of good labors, and the root of wisdom shall never fall away. As for the children of adulterers, they shall not come to their perfection. In the seed of an unrighteous bed shall be rooted out. For though they long li uh, live long, yet shall they be nothing regarded, and their last age shall be without honor. Or if they die quickly, they have no hope, neither comfort in the day of trial. For horrible is the end of the unrighteous generation. Very, very interesting sayings from Solomon. Next week we'll get into chapters 4 through 6. Uh, but I definitely want to talk about these first three chapters. The first thing we see, the exhortation to the unrighteousness. Solomon wrote this book to prove that living in sin, living in unrighteousness, will produce death and destruction in their lives. Because of this, we know for a fact that God has called us to be different from the Gentiles, from the heathens. It is by the grace of God that we know this for sure. The Lord is very merciful indeed. But if we want to live righteously, we got to live by God's rules. We got to be we got to be under his wing as I say. Secondly, I want to say is that the errors of the wicked. In chapter 2, we see the the, the wicked man trying to plot against the righteous. You know why? Because Satan, in the beginning, hated God and he hated his creation. And that's why he brought death unto this world. Because Eve got deceived and Adam got deceived. And it changed the whole playing field. Thirdly, the destiny of the righteous. Very beautiful. Very, very beautiful. You know, in order for us to walk in righteousness, we have to understand why we need, why we need it, because only God can help us to live right. Only God can help us to understand the goodness of God. It is important for us to live right before Elohim. It is our duty. If we if we want to walk in His ways, we got we got to do it uh, wholeheartedly. Because without that, you will be easily be deceived. Especially when they are elect, they they will be they will be deceived also. And we see this in Matthew chapter 25, where Jesus prophesied the end times. Even the elect will be deceived. 
and that it is so important for us to walk in his ways with all hearts. So that's my two cents. I hope you enjoyed this Bible study. Next week we'll get into chapters four through six and we see what's going on. So may God bless you. May God keep you. See you guys again next time. Bye.